Hello everyone, this is Michael Tarallo, Pre-Sales Director with Pentaho Corporation. And today I wanted to take a few moments to show you how easy it is to download and install Pentaho Enterprise Edition version 3.6 GA for the Linux operating system. Currently you see my screen, I'm looking at the Pentaho knowledge base. When you choose to download Pentaho from our website, you have an option of evaluating the Windows version or requesting the Linux version. The Windows version is probably the easiest one to get started with. It has a graphical installer and it also auto registers the product for 30 days if you have not previously installed a Pentaho product. The Linux version provides an easy to use graphical installation but does require the registration of the license keys that are provided to you by the Pentaho account executive. So in this case, when you register, you will have access to the Pentaho knowledge base you will either have auto-generated ID and password or you will be provided one by the account executive. Upon logging into the knowledge base, you can go over to the section called Enterprise Software, expand Pentaho BI Suite, and select Installers. Here you will have access to the Windows and the Linux version of the complete BI Suite installer. For evaluating Pentaho, it is recommended that you use the installers as they are the easiest way to get started and start seeing the power of Pentaho. Here you will see the Windows icon, and here is the Linux icon. In this case, what we can do is select Linux. This will open up a dialog which will allow you to save the file to the location on your drive. At this point I have already done that and the next step will be installing the software. To install the software you can explore to the location and double click it if your operating system allows that or you can execute it from the command line. What I'm going to do is open up a terminal window, show you the location of the software in this case we are in the home directory of the root user and verify that you have root-like or pseudo root-like credentials when doing the installation also verify that the virus scan software or firewall software has been disabled or paused during this installation upon installing the software once navigating to the location your software might not be ready to go because of certain permissions. You can verify those permissions by typing in an ls-ail and you will see the appropriate permissions next to the file here. If for some reason you do not have the executable permission, just perform a change mod 777 star in that directory and that will make the file ready for execution. During the installation I always like to open up security, make sure things such as the user credentials or any other thing that might prevent the installation from running such as the virus scan or the firewall all of that stuff is paused or stopped that way we can ensure a successful installation to begin installing the software we can just highlight the particular file name and copy and then perform dot slash paste and select enter on Linux operating systems that have a display it will bring up a graphical installation wizard. On operating systems without a display, it will start a text-based installation. From this point, it's pretty simple. You just click Next, accept the license agreement, and then choose which applications to install. This is part one of a series of recordings that I'll be putting up on my blog that will cover all aspects of the Pentaho BI Suite in aid to help you uh, evaluate the Pentaho software. At the same time, these particular components might not all be installed on the same system depending on which system you're installing it on. The BI server is the main component that handles the execution of the content delivery layer. However, we do have the design suite in the report design tools, analysis design tools, uh, the dashboard designer plugin for the web-based console, our ETL data integration tool, and then also the new data integration server and the analyzer plugin for the web-based user console. In this case, I'm not going to be doing anything with data integration and the data integration server, so we're going to uncheck those 
and we're going to focus this series right now on content delivery and we'll have another series dedicated to data integration. I'll click next and you'll be prompted to install the sample content. It is recommended that you select yes because immediately upon installation you can then view samples of what's possible utilizing the sample data that's been configured with Pintaho. Choose the location of the installation, ensuring you have appropriate access to write to that file structure, and then start providing passwords. The Pentaho BI Suite, by default with the installer, comes with a MySQL relational database, which is used as the repository for the internal workings of Pentaho. There is a root user, and here's where you set that root user's password. You might not have to manage or monitor this repository, but it is necessary to set the password in case you need, do need to go in there. So in this case, I set all my passwords for installation to password. Now the published password is for the design tools. When you start designing reports, metadata, analysis metadata, eventually you're going to use those tools and you're going to have to publish to the BI server and you're going to have to publish with a password credential. So in this case, we're just going to set that to password and ensure that you type in the passwords correctly or you will receive that notification. Now we also provide an administrator account which is used to log into the enterprise console which is a service that can monitor and manage the BI server. So in this case I also leave the defaults and put in password. Upon installation completing you will have a verification of the components installed and the port numbers. If there are ports and services that are running, you will notice that we will automatically choose the next one. So in this installation, I have actually have a Pentaho server and MySQL database up and running. So you can see that the default port, which should be 3306, is actually 3307. And same thing for the BI server, Tomcat, Tomcat port 8081. So your ports may vary. Just take notes of these ports as well as you might need to use them and then here we click next and perform the installation. Upon reaching 100% of the installation it will go through some service initialization, starting and running scripts for the MySQL database, the BI server, and the enterprise console. It's important to note at this point, if you receive any installation errors, the chances are it has to be environmental due to security or firewall or network settings. Upon installation, you will then be prompted to launch the Pentaho User Console and launch the Pentaho Enterprise Console. Now it's important to note that if you click Finish, it will launch a browser for both of these areas. And then first thing it's going to prompt you for is also to log in and put in the Enterprise Console Administration ID, password, and you'll be prompted to enter and register the license keys provided by your account executive. Now when you get to this screen you should have already copied the appropriate license files to a location on the drive. So what I'm going to do is go into the terminal and verify the location of these licenses and there's my Pentaho license directory. So you'll create that directory and you'll copy the license files to that directory. Please verify the ownership of those files so you have the appropriate write access. So then what you can do here is now go into this interface and then browse for that location of those files. So in this case we're going to go to the Pentaho licenses directory and then select each individual license and you will see it will register and your end date will vary depending on when you registered and received the license. So that is the 
Analysis Enterprise Edition, which enables the Analyzer component, the BI Platform Enterprise Edition, which enables the BI Platform certified versions of the software, the Dashboard License enables the Dashboard Designer, and the Enterprise Edition for PDI, Pentaho Data Integration, which will enable the Enterprise Edition console. Now please look and verify your solution directories and then also notice you can have running data integration server only if you only chose to set up Pentaho data integration or you can use both. Clicking OK will run some initialization type tests and then verify the installation of the software. Okay, so at this point, I want to take the time to show you a common problem that we are addressing within another version of our installer. So depending on when you watch this video, there is one important post-configuration step that people often miss depending on where they're installing the software. So when you're in the administration console, I want you to navigate to configuration, web settings. And I want you to take note of the base URL location. So by default, we default to the host name of localhost. If you're installing the BI server on a local system, that's fine if you're also using the design tools in the browser on that system. But if you're installing it on a remote server and then attempt to access the system from the remote server name on whatever browser or workstation you're using, you are going to encounter some errors. And the reason for that is that we append the host name to certain strings or query strings or URLs within the Pentaho BI server and what happens is, is the local host gets appended to that and when you're on your browser on your workstation it's looking for content on your machine or it doesn't recognize a server on your machine so you're gonna get errors so you might get missing images missing charts um, the web add a query tool might not work so it's important to note that you need to change the host name of this location so if the name of your machine is 1234 and that's referenced by DNS which is the network settings in your environment put the name of the host machine that you've installed on I believe in future installations we're actually going to auto populate this with the host machine or we're going to ask uh, the user to enter it in so after the installation navigate to configuration web settings and change this host name of the system and click submit now we're not going to get into configuring data sources. I'll do that in the next series. I'm just going to keep these videos short and then you could watch each one as you like. The next video series will go into adding your own data sources. Um, but at the moment right now we are just going to verify the installation and test um, the login to the Pentaho user console. So when you chose to continue after the installation and started those two particular services, please note the port numbers as we mentioned earlier in the browser and then when logging in you might say Mike well how do I log in well we have documentation called a getting started guide it kinda tells you how to do that but for this video when you install the samples you have a user Joe and a password is password and this will log you into the Pentaho user console so please note that you do have a wealth of knowledge inside our knowledge base and also included in the documentation directory uh, which is referenced by help documentation um, so by selecting this, you can get into the Puck user guide or Pentaho user console user guide in format PDF. It's a, a valuable document that will help you learn and explore the Pentaho user console. So one of the things I wanted to also show you is that you do have samples here. So by selecting reporting and then let's select inventory, you will get a sample report displayed here in the form of what's called a, a report viewer with a parameter panel and the actual report created with the Pentaho report designer. Uh, same thing for any of the additional content such as dashboards. Here I'll just execute the KPI dashboard. Toggle the browser and you can see the dashboard load. So at this point if this browser, oh there's another thing to note is that some of these controls are flash control so if you don't have the flash plugin um, it will prompt you to go download the flash plugin. So that can 
includes uh, the actual installation and setup processes for on Linux. Uh, you could imagine the installation is the same on Windows. And uh, the next series will go into configuring our data sources, and then we'll start touching on the uh, design tools within the BI suite. Thanks for your time, guys. I uh, hope to speak with you in person.